Rahim. Today we will talk about Hydrops Fetalis. Basically, hydro in Latin language means water. Fetalis means fetus. So, Hydrops Fetalis means too much water around the baby. How would you define Hydrops Fetalis? It is a serious fetal condition characterized by abnormal interstitial fluid collection in two or more compartments of the fetal body like peritoneal cavity, pleura and pericardium. What are the causes of fetal hydrops RH incompatibility? It causes large number of red blood cells in the fetus to be destroyed. This condition is also called hemolytic disease of the newborn and that results in compensatory high cardiac output resulting in shifting of the fluid from intravascular compartment to extravascular compartment resulting in fetal hydrops. The chromosomal abnormalities account for 14-16% to 16 cases of the non-immune hydrops fetalis with the Turner syndrome, triploidy, trisomy 13 and trisomy 18 being the most common diagnosis. Torch infection stands for toxoplasmosis and other like gonorrhea, hepatitis B, varicella, zoster virus, parvovirus B19 and HIV, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex virus and syphilis. Hydrops fetalis occurs in torch when the rate of interstitial fluid production by the capillary ultrafiltration exceeds the rate of interstitial fluid return to the circulation via lymphatic vessels. Hydrops can also occur in case of alpha thalassemia in the mother if developing baby's organ cannot overcome anemia. The herd starts to fail due to compensatory mechanism. Large amount of the fluid buildup in baby's tissue and organs resulting in hydrops fetalis. Diabetes mellitus in mother is a medical cause of fetal hydrops. Now how diabetes causes fetal hydrops? Intrauterine hypoxia and diabetic pregnant mother result in increase in catecholamine which causes decrease in hepatic and renal blood flow because of redistribution of the blood to the brain, heart, adrenals and ductus venosus. This causes renin angiotensin system activation, an increase in antidiuretic hormone and decrease in albumin. These mechanisms elevate central venous pressure and lead to decreased return of the lymphatic flow into systemic circulation and further complicate the loss of intravascular volume resulting in severe and progressive edema in the fetuses. In maternal hyperthyroidism, Hydrops fetalis is due to fetal hypothyroidism caused by intrauterine exposure to maternal antithyroid drugs. The general hypothesis is that deficient adrenergic activity in congenital hypothyroidism might lead to chylothorax in the non-immune hydrops fetalis in the fetuses. Hydrops can occur if the developing baby's organ cannot overcome anemia. It results in high output cardiac failure. Large amount of fluid build up in the baby's tissue and organs resulting in hydrops fetalis. Mother with SLE are at increased risk of having fetus with severe hydrops and MCA peak systolic velocity suggests severe anemia. Now how to take history from patient with hydrops fetalis? First of all, take history related to the demographic profile of the patient in which we ask the name of the patient, the age of the patient. Along with the educational status and occupation, it's very important to ask whether it was cousin marriage or not because it is a risk factor for developing hydrops fetalis. Then after asking about the gravidity and the parity, we ask about the LMP and check the gestational age and the expected date of the delivery. We ask about the presenting complaint and take trimester wise history in detail. Then we inquire details related to the current problem which is hydrops. So we ask about the pattern of the abdominal growth, the fetal movements in the 12 hours, the symptom of uterine over distension or the pressure symptoms like heartburn, dyspepsia, abdominal discomfort, PR bleeding, etc. After that we ask questions in order to find out the cause of hydrops fetalis if any. So among all the causes of hydrops fetalis, first of all we have to rule out the RH incompatibility. So we ask about the patient blood group, the husband blood group, history of the expensive injection in any pregnancy or after delivery that is NTD, history of the intrauterine transfusion of the, or the postnatal transfusion or the early neonatal death due to jaundice. 
In order to detect the possibility of the chromosomal or the structural anomalies, we ask questions like consanguineous marriages, previous history or the family history of the abnormal babies, and we review the report of the anomaly scan as well. For torch infection, we take history of the flu-like symptoms like fever, sore throat and rash. We inquire about the possibility of alpha thalassemia or the history of the blood transfusion in her or in the family. Then we inquire about the possibility of maternal diabetes mellitus, severe anemia or systemic lupus erythematosus. We ask about the questions like weight loss, palpitation and cold intolerance in order to rule out the possibility of hyperthyroidism. Then after asking the questions related to differential diagnosis, we take the detailed obstetric history of the patient and we inquire about the history of the same problem in the previous pregnancy, at what gestation, what was the cause, what was the timing, how, what was the mood of the delivery and outcome. After that, we take the gynecological history, medical history plus the drug history, family history, surgical history, personal history and the socio-economic history. After taking the detailed history, we do the general physical examination of the patient in which first of all, after handshaking and introduction again, we just give thermometer to the patient. We examine the hands of the patient for pallor and cyanosis. We check the pulse of the patient and check the blood pressure. As hyperthyroidism is one of the causes of high drops, so it's very important to do complete thyroid examination. Then we examine the conjunctive of the patient for pallor we examine the sclera for jaundice. Then we take thermometer back from the patient and check the temperature and ask her to lie down on the bed comfortably. We approach to the legs of the patient and examine legs for pedal edema and any varicosities on the leg for the pressure symptoms. As hydrops is associated with the early onset preeclampsia, so in patients with hydrops vitalis, we need to uh, check the reflexes as well. So First, check the knee jerk, then check the ankle jerk of the patient by using appropriate technique by using the tendon hammer. Also check the clonus of the patient. As hydrops vitalis is associated with large for gestational age fetuses, so it's important to do appropriate obstetric examination in which we check the fundal height which is usually larger than expected gestational age. Then we assess the liquor volume, estimated fetal weight and the fetal heart sound and we check abdominal wall edema and right upper quadrant tenderness. After that we do appropriate systemic examination of the patient. We cover the patient in the end and say thanks. Once we are done with the examination, we just go for the investigations and we order the tests like first of all the blood group and RH factor. If blood group of the patient is RH negative, do husband blood group in order to check for the RH incompatibility which is a very important cause of the hydrops fetalis. The other baseline investigations include blood complete picture, the urine routine examination, random blood sugar which is postprandial one hour in the pregnant lady or OGTD especially in the Asian population. HBS antigen plus anti-HCV plus anti-HIV antibody. Then we come to the special investigations which include anti-rho, anti-law antibodies in order to check for the possibility of systemic lupus erythematosus. We do maternal viral serology for torch. We do HbA1c level if patient gives history of the diabetes or in case the random blood sugar or the OGTD is deranged. The Klehar betke test is very important here in which we check for the fetomaternal hemorrhage. The different fetal tests include first of all the dating scan, the anomaly scan and the recent obstetrical ultrasound in order to know about the fetal biometry, the liquor volume and other parameters. Fetal echocardiography is checked for any sort of the cardiac defects. Fetal karyotyping test is checked in order to find out any chromosomal or structural abnormalities. The thyroid function tests like T3, T4 and TSH will help us to detect the possibility of hyperthyroidism. Next comes the management of the hydrops fetalis patient and the management depends upon the overall clinical presentation, examination and investigations. 
So before going toward the management council, the patient regarding diagnosis involve multidisciplinary team in the management of the patient. Explain the maternal risk associated with this condition, which include the fetal macrosomia, induction of the labor and operative delivery. Also explain the prognosis of hydrops fetalis to the patient. Tell her that there is increased risk of the perinatal mortality of more than 85% in case of the non-immune hydrops, while good survival of 85-90% to in case of the immune hydrops with repeated intrauterine transfusion. In case of untreated hydrops, ultimately IOD or early neonatal death ensures. Counsel the patient regarding the need of intrauterine transfusion and tell her that only in case of the anemia secondary to the parvovirus P19 or large fetal maternal hemorrhage, the survival is improved with repeated intrauterine transfusion. But the prognosis with intrauterine in case of the parvovirus is not as good as with the RH negative intrauterine transfusion. Also consult the patient regarding the complications associated with intrauterine transfusion, which include the red cell aplasia, myocarditis, and cardiac failure. Counsel the patient about the risk of the fetal loss in case of the intrauterine transfusion, which is 10% in case of the non-immune hydrops and 12 to 15% in case of the hydrops fetuses. Tell the patient that treatment of the hydrops fetalis depends upon the cause which we dig out while taking the history, examining the patient and investigations. If fetal arrhythmia is diagnosed, treated either indirectly with the maternal administration of anti-arrhythmic drugs or give it directly to the fetus invasively. In case of the structurally uh, anomalous baby, pediatric consultation about survival, prognosis and treatment option is must. So thank you so much. That was all about Hydrops Fetalis. Subscribe on Obsen Gaini. Allah Hafiz.